World of YouTube, Tampa Saint here, and uh, I don't know, I'm very disturbed over this case of the lost boy that went missing in Lowell, and then was pronounced dead and drowned. I find this case now very bizarre, and in a few minutes you will know why. And I had to do a mapping on this, and what I have found is Blake. Mind blowing. <laughs> Mind you, today um, the wife wanted to go try a uh, seafood restaurant. Said it was in Gloucester. <laughs> Sent me a link. It was on Facebook. So here I am thinking, you know, it's in Gloucester and we're going to head out there. I was going to do some stuff out there. But I ended up getting a uh, wrong turn. Wrong turn in Albuquerque, folks. Found out it was in Lowell. I uh, went out there and, you know, tried it out. Excellent seafood. But decided to do a little door dashing out there. And wouldn't you believe that when I finished up DoorDash heading back home, I ended up, no lie, believe it or not, in the area of Pawtucket Valley. And I was like, what the? F wow. Mind blown away. So, I'm about to wonder if this is gotta be said this is gotta be a sign of some sort and of course like i say you'll figure this out when i show you a little mapping now the story is babysitter had the kid dropped off in the morning within an hour or so the kid supposedly walked out of an unsafe or unlocked door because someone left it open, the babysitter or something. Which, you know, I'm sorry. If you're a babysitter and you're watching somebody's kid, <clears throat> due to the fact that they were tending to another child, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're letting your guard down and let a three-year-old to do whatever he's doing by himself, and then all of a sudden, oh, I, uh, yeah, I left the door open, and uh, there, uh, I'm sorry, you're not doing your job, and you shouldn't have that type of job. And I got four boys, that's right, and I'll tell you one thing. Oh, man, just to even think of the fact that I would let that kid step out at three years old and just say, hey, Especially modern days, you know, it ain't like back in my day. But then again, something could have happened to me, but I was like three, no, four years old, and I wandered off to the neighbor's <laughs> house. Old lady, my mother said, and giving me cookies and milk, you know, something could have tragically happened back then. I could have ended up disappeared, you know, chopped up, put in the next batch of cookies that the old woman made. But... Luckily or whatnot, and supposedly I'm sure my mother and father knew the woman. You know, back in them days, you could wander. Very young age, and it's crazy to say, but, you know, but don't get me wrong. Kids wander. There was another three-year-old who went missing. It's the boy out there in Athol, Mass. And I did a video out there, and um, he was in a at the Athol High School in the field where the track and field is. And they have claims that you'll see them walking around the fence out there. I think I might have caught something out there, but I don't remember, but... I don't know if I should go back out there, because back then all I had my phone, and it was during the day. And I was supposed to do a night video, but I didn't get a chance. But anyways... It was common back in my days and beyond that, you know, kids, they definitely, you know, wandered and walked and was curious of things. But most of the time, 
They would come back. Well, they would not be lost, kidnapped, or whatnot. Have the smart sense. But like I say, these days, and my kids, I will, <laughs> you want to talk about working 13 hours a day. Come on, run around, chase the freaking kid. Deal with the woman. Go to bed, get up, do it all over again. Whatever the case may be, yes, it is very exhausting, very um, intense. You got to be on your game when tragedies happen, just like this. And I don't know, I, I'm sorry, this babysitter shouldn't even be doing this job. And I hope she takes it into mind to stop doing it after this tragedy. Because there's no excuse as why this kid was just, oh, oh, yeah, 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 snuck out the back door. I'm sorry, that, that's bullshit. If you can't do the job, you take the heat in the kitchen, get out of the kitchen. And then and, and it's sad, it's sad. But what I'm trying to think, bear with me. <clears throat> Oh, there they go. Step aside for a moment. We're back. And, um, I don't know, like I said, I'm very disturbed at this case. And I think, I think, personally, thoughts, theories, ideas, this was not just ordinary accident. I'm sorry. For one, you got a babysitter not doing a job. Doesn't matter. You got to be on top of things. And whatever, if I sound like an asshole and, oh, you know, and say that this person, uh, well, yeah, yes. there's no excuse. There's no freaking excuse of why this kid walked out a door. Literally, who knows how all night, all night till the next day being found. Just think of this. Just think of this. Stop and think of this. So yeah, kid walks out the door. The, the, the babysitter is all right. Call the police. There's a massive hunt. And this, they go by the pond. Check the damn pond. Drain pools in the neighborhood. Still no kidding. But the very next day, the very next day, He's in a pond that was already searched. Can someone please tell me how do they miss a kid in a pond, let alone, you know, because <laughs> if you're doing dive teams and you're getting, like they said, they had diving teams or whatnot, and you're firefighters. How do you miss a kid? So, with that being said, with that being said, here we have Fred Elaine. Now it is very unclear. I don't, I did not get a number of the house. I don't even think they would give a number of a house. But by the means of me looking through this, the only way that this kid, and I believe this is the pond, let alone, and oh man, yeah, I was over by this. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, brother. Nuts. Just friggin' nuts. So, mm. I am just, you know, and here we are, now that I look at it, didn't even realize that we're also near the Lowell, Dracut, Tingsboro State Forest. So I'll tell you, that place is very haunted because I got musical, the musical um, melodies you hear out there. I got that on video. I do got to do that video over and get it where I can shorten it, but... Um, I had to buy another friggin' um, 
SD card or whatever to get more, you know, uh, hours so I can do more footage. Because what I have on the old one, man, I cannot touch it. And I do not want to delete it. So I have everything that I've caught that I have put up. But due to the fact I did recording from the phone and not on the... If, um, later on in the future, I'm planning on getting myself a laptop with, you know, Wi-Fi on it so I can download the proper way of a video instead of recording off a TV and getting all the static. So, yeah, I'm trying to get legit with this so I can, you know, stop recording with the phone off the TV. <clears throat> but... Anyways, the only thing I can say on this is this kid. So Fred Elaine, as you can see, there's a lot of houses. Over there at the pond, you can also see a lot of houses. And how does a kid get missed? This is the question. Now, whether or not he walked fully through the woods, as you can see, the huge wooded area here. Who knows if he sat on a tree stump, got scared or petrified in the woods and stayed in one spot all night. Who knows if the little guy just stood there and couldn't scream due to petrified of fear. One thought theory idea. But, like I say, a serious search was done and... If there was so much as everybody searching in these woods, and if the kid was there, he, I think, excuse me, would have been found. Now, one thing leads me to the second thought theory idea I have is, as you can see, the path here going into the woods, how close it, it is to that cul-de-sac there, Fred Elaine, someone wandering off the path, coming down here, or coming in the back outskirts of the woods, near houses. Now, the kid supposedly got out in the backyard, out a door that was should have been locked, let alone should have been, you know, Whatever this babysitter so-called was doing, tending to another child, um, we have a stalker is what I believe. Because for the kid to be missing, all right, that search went on all friggin' day. Someone would have saw that kid. Because if he ended up in this pond down here, all right, that means he was in the area through all the search. Now, what if someone, like I said in my first video, not knowing that they found the boy, mind you, and I put that in the description box, that I, when I did my video, I went back on the case to see if anything developed, and yes, something developed. The body was found. Holy shit. Drowned. So my thought theory is, is that someone lured that boy. Because how did he end up in the pond and nobody seen him? No witnesses. And if there's a boy wandering around and ended up in the pond, near a pond and drowned, how the hell was there no witnesses? Unless he maybe could have got out of his petrified of fear, walked during the night. But I don't know. I would think a... Uh, three-year-old at this point at night and could have made it to that pond, would have been whimpering, crying. I think only a normal kid, unless this kid had no fear, just lost and didn't know what to do. But one would think this kid would be making noise. <clears throat> so with that being said... And then he finds a pond. Excuse me. And at night decides he's going to take himself a swim. I mean. Let's look at the reality here. Now. What if somebody. 
And I just said this today to my wife. Just a sprouted idea from nowhere. And yes, what if someone in that neighborhood, let alone someone drifting in from another neighborhood or just drifting and staying in the woods, maybe got a tent out there, but then that would have been seen and found. But there's a thought and theory of one of these um, other neighboring streets, someone gets the idea to see all these kids drowning, and there's been a lot of reports coming up of a lot of people drowning, day after this or the day, you know, yeah, I think it was the day after this, another boy drowned in the Merrimack River, not too far from this area. So, and then there was another drowning that happened. There's like maybe five or six drownings now that have occurred. I say, so someone's in the neighboring neighborhood. Maybe they got the idea of, wow, well, all these parents are letting their kids drown and nothing's happening. What if they got a one-time killing spree thought? see this little boy wandering and <laughs> you know just got the thought of what if I excuse me could get away with murder see a boy wandering Getting these thoughts and crazy. You know what? The best way to catch a killer, you got to think like a killer. So, in this sick, demented mind, this person may be, oh, there, there are people not watching the kids around here, huh? What if he just brought them over there to the pond, stuck the poor boy in and, you know, drowned him? Because that would be the only perfect scenario that I could come up with is if a drifter wandering or a neighboring house getting curious everybody all the kids are drowning he drowned too teach you a lesson to the parents let the kid wander around here and then they get that one one day of urge to say, wonder if I can get away with murder. Hmm, something to think about, right? Because for a three-year-old boy to be wandering in a vicinity like this, for a three-year-old boy not to be making no any type of noises or whimpering, like I said, or crying or... You know, just wandering through the woods all through the night. That to me is ludicrous. That to me is insane. And for anybody to say this was an accident. <laughs> and they're going to let it go like that is insane. Just far beyond any... Um murder scene that I've ever seen. I think this boy was murdered. And that person will sit there in that house, maybe in the attentions of, right, teaching a parent a lesson. You have a boy out here, three years old, wandering, well, obviously that parent ain't a good parent. A lot of parents these days have been killing a lot of kids. I don't know, folks, to say if the maybe, just maybe the babysitter, maybe, because, you know, babysitting kids and there's a lot of daycares that when kids, and I just had one come up today or yesterday in the Google News, daycare worker looking up on her phone 
about shaking baby syndrome or, you know, anything's in the mix of shaking a baby. And that baby now is dead. I don't know, folks. Look at this haunting map. You tell me what you think, because there's Fred Elaine close up. There's the pond. And I don't know, man. I don't know. Geez, just to think if he wandered to the river or wandered to this swampy area in the trails. And even if he was to go to that swampy area in the trails, he'd be on a trail and nobody saw him. Hmm. Oh, man, it just sucks to see these tragedies. And I don't care what anybody says, because you know what? Any type of babysitter that's just, oh, geez, I, uh, well, yeah, uh, the door was open, and uh, oh, I was tending to the other child, and uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shame on you. Shame on you. Sorry. And that three-year-old didn't look too much of like a uh, hyperactivity boy. He looked very curious in his pictures. Like a curious boy. And sometimes the curious, just like they say, curiosity killed the cat. And they're curious like that, and someone tells them, Hey, you want some candy over here? Come here, boy. Curiousness. I do believe he was lured to his death. That is not the facts, but that is my thoughts, theories, and ideas. What do you think happened? Because you got professional, professional firefighters that checked that pond and there was nothing but the next day the body's there. Has anybody else got a thought, theory, idea? Hmm. You tell me about it. Tell me what you think happened. I suspect foul play. But they are going to let this go as an accidental drowning, I believe. Will they go forth with a full investigation? Eh, who knows? All I know is that a three-year-old boy and a killer, that poor boy ain't got a chance. Not a damn cold day chance in hell. And it's sad, folks, that this shit kind of happens. And whether or not he wandered out of that door and right made it to the pond somehow. But to be out in the woods at three years old and not flinch to the darkness, not to flinch to whatever that could lurk out there or being eaten alive by mosquitoes, because I'm sure them are out. <laughs> that just, uh, man, that don't settle with my head. That, that boy got in that pond somehow, and it wasn't by him. <clears throat> Till that next video, man. Hopefully they do a little more investigation into this, but my thoughts, my theories, my ideas. That's all you get here. You don't get the facts. You don't get, sometimes you don't get the truth. You just get thoughts, theories, ideas. I'll let you know when the truth is the truth. Till that, this case, bizarre. Be safe, take care. Out.